Welcome to another episode of Faherty Up Close from a Distance. Uh, my guest today is one of my very favorite people on this planet, a man that I've played with for many years on the uh, European tour. Uh, he won the Italian Open and not much else, to be honest, but he was a, a really a pretty damn good player. Uh, kind of one of those, he was sort of like me. He was never going to be one of those great uh, top echelon players because he had too much fun. He works for Sky now, our sister network over in uh, the UK. Mr. Richard Boxall. Boxy, great to see you. Yeah, good to see you, uh, Fair, as well. That was that was some introduction, that. I quite enjoyed that. that was, <laughs> I'm not so sure I can quite compare my sort of career to yours, really, but, um, but you know, we both did win the fifth major, didn't we? Which is, we which did. is amazing. The Italian Open. Yeah, exactly. Where, where are you at the moment? Right now, um, I'm just leading this horse race here, which uh, quite comfortably, <laughs> well ahead of half a furlong. Um, no, I'm in the kitchen at home. Um, I think it has to be said that fairly instantly from this uh, from this lockdown, fear, I, I became virtually overnight a fantastic uh, landscape gardener, uh, a Michelin chef. <laughs> um, a, a domestic molly maid. Um, I've not used the dishwasher for four weeks because it gives me a little bit more time to do things. Um, it's just very, very, it's weird, weird times at the moment. But, uh, you know, we're, we're not so long. I think we'll be out the other side fairly soon. Well, actually, when I asked you, where, where are you? What town are you in? You, you grew up in Camberley, right? Uh, yeah, no, I grew up in Camberley. I've done a lot of travelling. Um, and right now, the, the, the home, the domicile, is uh, in Bracknell. Now, you, you probably know where Bracknell is, I should imagine. I you, you, you lived around this area for a bit, didn't you? I did, yeah. You're just west of London, right? That's right, yeah. But about 30 minutes, 30 minutes from Heathrow. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're coping fairly well with the uh, social distancing. I know, but I, I imagine with no pubs being open, it must be a, an absolute tragedy for you. Well, it is. It's not good. I mean, I had, um, as you know, a lot of uh, pubs around this sort of area, and especially in England, are called the uh, Fox and Hounds. And, and, you know, with my nickname, Boxy, yeah. I opened one up here. Now it's called the Box and Hounds. Um, <laughs> and it opens at about six o'clock most evenings. But so far, there's only been two guests. So a little struggling a little with the uh, with the punters coming in. Golf injuries are, uh, you know, they, they're not any stranger than the one that you had at the 91 uh, Open at, at Royal Birkdale. You, you, let me see if I've got this right. You were on the ninth tee playing with Colin yeah. Montgomery. Yeah. And you managed to break your own leg on the downswing. Now, I've always said that, uh, you know, it's amazing what people will do to avoid playing that last nine with Monty. But that seems a little extreme. Well, yes, they, they, I had a nickname of, you know, Kit Kat, take a break for a while. Um, but they, um, I, I remember I said to Monty in the morning, I said, there's something wrong with my leg. And he's like, I'm trying to win a major, go away. <laughs> so, um, so, I said, so we carried on. Anyway, down, uphill shots were fine because there was more weight on my right hand side. Downhill shots were a bit iffy because my brain is telling me you can't commit and go through this. So I shanked to... I shanked a two iron on about the six. And again, I said to Monty, I said, there's something wrong. I said, there's something wrong with my leg. He's going, not now. Not now. <laughs> so, so we carry on. Anyway, I get to the eighth hole. I hit this one iron off the tee, straight down when it is at the tough eighth hole like that. And I've got to the point where I can't kneel down on all fours to look at a line of a part. I've got to just kneel down on one knee. So anyway, I'm 40 yards behind Monty on the on the eighth, and he says, says to me, there is something wrong with your leg, isn't there? I said, yes, there is. So anyway, cut long story short, we walk up to the ninth, and you've got those big Schweppes drinks cabinets there, and I thought, right, I've got to commit myself to this tee shot. So I went across, took a drink, went down there, pegged up a one iron, ping one iron, stood there, and actually, literally, no disrespect to anyone playing off 24 handicap, I felt like a 24 handicap. I thought, what am I about to do? I just thought, if I commit to this shot, it might ease what's gone on in my ankle or in my shin. Stood there with a ping one iron, hit it. As soon as I hit it, leg snapped in half. <laughs> club came out of my hand, hit the deck like a sack of spuds. And, and, and um, everyone was like that. <laughs> Round the uh, the, the first Mrs. Boxall, she was over a hill. She thought she thought I'd been shot, um, <laughs> hoping I'd all, all, all the insurance tickets. And um, anyway, they all came bumbling back. 
Monty was there. Uh, he didn't sort of say anything. And then Mark James and Howard Clark came up. And, uh, and the referee said to them, uh, he said, Mr. He said, Mark, he said, can Conor Montgomery join you for the last 10 holes? And Jesse, you know, Jesse, he went, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so Monty had to play on, bless him. With, yeah. a, with a marker until, until he caught up with, uh, I think it was VJ Singh and Barry Lane, and, and then played play around with the rest of them. But I always say it's amazing the extremes you'll go to not to play with Monty, isn't it, really? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Talk me through um, the, the, the Italian Open that you won. As you say, you know, we both uh, won it. I won it in 80-something. That was in Monza. And, and funnily enough, you, you feature in some of my... Uh, after dinner speeches or whatever, or Q&As that I have to do, you, you feature in it because I remember like, I had a five-shot lead going into the last round. The only thing you could do from there was completely and utterly mess it up. So <laughs> I remember I remember that evening, before I, I went to the bedroom, I was going to go up early. And I'd moved hotels into the same hotel as you, and I think Sam was there. And I, I went off to go to go to bed. And I remember you shouting to me, you went, Oi, boxing. I said, Yeah. I said, Where are you going? He said, It was about 9.30. You went, Do not be ridiculous. You will not sleep. You're coming with me into the old part of Monza. And off you pulled me by the collar. Down I went. I said, What are we doing? What do we do? He said, We're going to have a drink, possibly two. <laughs> he said, Because you won't sleep and you've got a five shot lead. And I remember we went, sat down. You might not remember it, but we no, sat I do. down by a church. And we had, in those days, I was drinking a little bit of Cointreau occasionally, and we used to call them light bulbs of Cointreau because you'd fill the glass up with the ice and you used to mist up like a, you know, like a light bulb. Do you remember that? <laughs> and yes. we, had, well, we had a sort of a cafe con leche with that, and we had one or two of those. And off I went to bed at about 11.30. We'd had, we'd had a lot of rain, and I think it was an early start. It was a 2 tea start on the final day. And I, I do actually remember getting to the end of my bed and praying for rain. <laughs> I thought, I can't cope with this. <laughs> yeah. it's, I remember you always saying something about being under pressure. You've got to be a bit perverted if you enjoy being under pressure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I got the end of it. I thought, oh, please, God, rain. Please, please, rain. Please, rain. Anyway, I opened the curtains in the morning, bright sunshine. I thought, oh, got to get on with it. And I remember getting to the first tee, walked across that huge, great putting green, playing with Romero and uh, Ollie. And I got to the first, first hole was a par five. I went par five, par four, par four. And I went first hole birdie from about, I don't know, 25 feet, something like that. Ollie went in birdie. I then went second hole, 35, 40 footer in birdie. I thought this was a nice start. Ollie went in. And then on the third hole, I fatted it onto the front of the green on the third and unbelievably hold it from about 70 feet. <laughs> in it went like that. Ollie goes in from 30 feet. I thought, now cut, look. I only want one. I just want one. Now, give me, you've won hundreds of them. Just give me a chance. And I remember, I, I hold a good part on about the 13th to stay five ahead. And um, uh, the next week, Ollie said to me at Wentworth, it was all over, he said, by the 13th, when you hold that, um, when you hold that part from 20 feet. So I said, do you want to have a look at my laundry bill? I can assure you it wasn't over by then. <laughs> You know, people say it was only one win, but I say it was two, my first and my last. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good year that year. Well, you you don't remember, you you sort of put the, the dampness on me that year because you, when we went to the Dunhill later on in the year, you were captain of the Dunhill yeah. side. And we, yeah. we played you in the final. Do you remember? Yeah. Uh, who was it? You, Rafferty and Walton, was it? Philip Walton. Very good, yeah. yeah. That wasn't bad, yeah. And, and it was me, Jesse, James, Mark James and, and Howard Clark. Yeah. And I remember that. And you, you 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 also moved on a little later towards the end of the year, getting near Christmas, when we played in the, the World Cup at Grand Cypress. Oh, yeah. We played with Rafferty. That's I right. Remember, I can only remember these because I played in them only once. So <laughs> you played a few. And I remember, I think it was, it was either you or Rafferty, I think it was Raff shot 63 on the final round. No, that, that was me. <laughs> that was you? Yeah. I love you for that, David. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so that was it. No, but uh, but um, no, that was my memories of the uh, Italian Open. Hope it didn't go on too long. Well, you mentioned the Open Championship uh, in which you managed to break your leg in 1991. Yes. Um, w w with it being cancelled, what's the general feeling uh, in in Europe uh, uh, about that? 
Well, there was a chat. There was a chat that it could be. You know, they they chatted about nudging it down towards sort of October, November time, or sort of yeah. you know middle of November. And you know what it's like over here. I mean, the Lynx courses are hard enough in the Open Championship in July. I mean, you couldn't. You know, you get to November. I mean, you'd be wearing balaclavas and fourteen gloves, and you know, I mean, and not only that, it's dark as well. You know, the Open Championship, you play till quarter ten at night, don't you? If you know, yeah. especially in the first two rounds. In an, in an ideal world, which won't happen, and I know it won't happen, it, you almost feel like you want to say, OK, well, we finished on March the 10th. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take the whole year off and we're going to go right the way back and we're going to start again on March the 14th with the Indian Open or the Kenyan Open, whatever was the next event. But obviously, you know, world rankings are going to keep moving. Things are going to happen. So that isn't going to happen. And I think if, if, it does, if it all does work out all right, I think we're going to, from I don't know Ju- July-ish time, right the way through to right up to Christmas. I think it's going to be a fairly hectic schedule. Well, listen, you were one of the uh, one of the first players to use a, a sports psychologist, uh, Alan Fine, who is also yeah. a great friend of mine, rescued my career. And I think the best way to uh, to figure out what's going on in your mind is to do a little rapid fire. Here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is rapid fire with Richard Boxall. Somebody start a clock. Um, yeah. What is uh, what's the first thing you're going to do when the virus is gone? Uh, first thing I'm going to do, cheer. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite open venue? Uh, yeah, Phil. Your broadcasting hero. Maybe fifty. Oh no, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I've got to be serious. Um, stop the clock. Um, uh, I don't know. You're right up there, Dave. I enjoy you. It's got to be Peter Alice. Ah, yes, that's yeah. going to be. Yeah, yeah. Sure. What is your favourite British meal? I'm a very great lover of the very slim meals, like sausage and chips, ham and chips, that sort of thing. I'm, re- I'm, yeah. you know, should have married a farmer's wife. Really, I'd have been absolutely perfect. Two <laughs> meat and two veg. <laughs> What's uh, the most binge-worthy television show? Uh, I used to like. I watched Forty Towers on and on and on. I just oh, think yeah. that's hilarious. Classic. Yeah, oh, yeah. Classic. Uh, the most uh, the most notorious member of the royal family is for what? <laughs> yeah, that is the correct answer. Yeah, um, give me your favourite foursome. Who would you play with? I would like to play with George Best, um, Jack Nicholson, <laughs> and Clint Eastwood. Oh right, that's, that's an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. And one word, to, one word to describe Ian Poulter. Uh, one word to describe Ian Poulter, motivational. One word to describe Justin Rose. Teddy. One word to describe Monty. <laughs> one, um, hang on a minute, I know, I know, hang on, one word to describe Monty, interesting. Yeah. Well, that is it uh, for Rapid Fire. Boxy, thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. It's great to, to see you. It's great to hear you again, my old friend. Uh, you're always a hoot. Dave, thanks very much. Uh, I'll catch up with you soon, no doubt. Yeah, be safe. And you. Charity is presented by Farmers Insurance. Yes,